Hey guys, I'm John from Fix It With Zim, and today I'm going to show you how to repair this vinyl siding corner trim. Alright, so as you can see, this corner piece has suffered from years of abuse, mainly from the kids' handlebars on their bikes, and I believe I also nailed this with the snowblower a few years back during a blizzard, but that's a story for another day. Let's see, this is, uh, it's got some holes in it, it's cracked. Luckily, in our case, though, it's a real easy fix. Before we get started, if you're not familiar with how vinyl siding is installed, essentially all your trim, which would be your corner pieces, your J-channel, which goes around your doors and your windows, that's all installed on the house first. And then what happens after that's all done is the field courses of siding get installed. So now if you think about what we're doing here today, we want to repair this corner piece. If we wanted to replace that, we'd have to work in the inverse order. We'd have to take off the siding as it exposes our corner trim here and the nailing flanges, which run down both sides of the trim. So to get these nails out to remove this, obviously we need to remove the vinyl siding off the house. Luckily today I'm going to show you a trick and how we can avoid taking all the siding off and repair our damaged corner piece which is on the front of this house quickly and easily. I cut a small piece of siding off this main piece here for demonstration purposes and then what I did is I cut off the mounting flanges on both sides of this. So essentially just took a knife, ran that right down like that, and then both these come off obviously. What we're left with is a piece of corner trim here with these rounded flanges on both sides. Alright, so let's go outside and I'll show you exactly what this gives us. Alright, so again obviously guys this small piece is just for demonstration here. Normally you'd cut a piece to cover up the entire corner to hide this repair a little better. So again our, our rounded edges here, we're going to take that and wrap it around the existing corner piece on that side and obviously we have to do that on the other side as well and there you have it so that's basically what you end up with now you can imagine again if we have a continuous piece running from top to bottom all those problems here with the existing piece again get covered up one other thing i wanted to mention here this piece that i just put on is a four inch piece of corner trim so it's four inches from the corner here to here and obviously on this side as well four inches from this corner to the back corner the existing piece of corner trim on the house is three and a half inches so you need to upsize that a little bit to make this repair work the most common size you're probably going to find on the house happens to be three inches this will work on a three inch piece of corner trim so you can use a four inch on either a three and a half or a three inch if you cannot find a larger piece to cover up the existing siding. What you're then gonna have to do is come in with a knife and cut off basically the entire corner here and just keep the flanges on the edge here. Okay, so as the old saying goes, pictures or it didn't happen. Here's my shed. These are three inch corner pieces. Again, here's our four inch replacement corner. As you can see that that works just fine on this as well. In fact, it actually goes on a little bit easier. Okay, I'll put a link in the description below where I purchased my 4 inch corner. They are a little difficult to find, they aren't as readily available as the 3 inch, but they are out there. Again, I'll put a link in the description below where you can purchase yours. Alright, so with all that out of the way now, let's get to it and replace this. Gotta get a measurement in terms of the height. We got 105 with mine, so cut that to size. All right, so I'm going to use my miter saw to cut this. If you don't have one, you can use a knife to cut it just as easily. Right. Main thing when you're using a miter saw, just go nice and slow because it can grab this and crack it. But that cut the size. Again, we have to cut our mounting flanges now on both sides of this so we can snap it around that existing piece on the house. Again, you're just basically running your knife right down the seam here. And I recommend you use a razor blade like this with an extendable blade because it allows you to extend it and get in here a little bit easier to do this. I keep checking to make sure that I'm not getting too close to the, uh, the edge that we need to save here. Again, this is what you end up with. Nice flange there to wrap around the existing piece. Alright, so we're going to slice off this other side now. 
And then just ride the blade right down inside of that groove. See right in there. Basically, we want that to cut it. This bigger blade on this knife definitely helps. Get this done a little bit quicker. Just like that. All right, so real quickly over here, I removed the strap off the downspout so I could pull it away from the side of the house a little bit to tuck this new one in underneath that. So hopefully this should just snap right into place now. All right, so a little tricky, but you'll get this on. Gotta pull that flange on the new one around the existing one on the house. You will get it, it's just a little tricky to get it started. Let's pick a, pick a side, either the top or the bottom, and just work your way up. All right guys, so I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a little difficult to snap on when you have this long of a piece. What I recommend you do is you get one of these. This is a siding removal tool. I'll put a link in the description below. And what that'll allow you to do is pull out that lip on the new piece we're snapping over the old piece and make it a little bit easier to get it into place. All right, so basically like that. And I know it's a little difficult to see what I'm doing here right now, but I'm just taking this, snapping it underneath the new piece, and pulling it out. And you can see how then it just falls right into place. Just take your time, work your way up. If you look down here, I have my knee up against the trim that's to hold it in place so it doesn't snap off. I've made that mistake already a couple times, so you definitely have to do that. Just, just keep working your way up the side. Almost there. All right, that's one side. So I come around to this side over here now. All right, so I removed that downspout here now, guys. What we're going to do is just pull this around, again with this tool, and take your time. Work it in there, pull it out, and when I get a little lower, you can see exactly what I'm doing here. But actually, this side's going in a lot easier than the other side was. So pull it right around. But this tool definitely makes this job a lot easier. Pick one of these things up. Again, link in the description below. Come on, baby. Got it. Guys, but well, there you have it. Uh, again, it definitely makes this process a little easier just snapping that over the existing piece so you don't have to strip all the siding off. But like I said, I'm not going to lie, it's, it is a little difficult to snap that over the, uh, the damaged piece of trim that's on the house. Get yourself one of these tools, you're definitely going to need it. It's going to take all that long uh, from start to finish with this video is maybe like 20 minutes and that's filming it as well so you'll be able to get it done a lot quicker than I did obviously if you're not holding a camera but 100 times better than what it looked like originally. So again check the description below for items I used in today's video. If you're new to my channel maybe you want to subscribe check out the rest of my content hammer that like button and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.